your marketing plan can stand out from the pack. Reach consumers all along their journey. Measure the impact of your TV budget. Use TV to drive website traffic. What's the return on your TV spend? You'll know with targeted TV. your time and thanks for stopping by. This is Shelly Stansfield from Centriply and today my team and I will be bringing you the latest and greatest in unbiased evaluation of what targeted TV can do for your advertising campaigns. We know you have many other things on your calendar and really appreciate that you've chosen to spend time with us today. I'm here with Kaylin Chenaridis and we'll be working together to answer your questions and she'll handle the technical side of the webinar. On our last webinar, we focused on using TV to drive customers to a retail location. In this one, we'll cover attribution of your TV impressions. Our big question is, what did that TV budget do for you? I would like to let viewers know, if you're watching this video on YouTube, simply click on the link below the video and you'll be connected to a landing page that contains all of these cool resources so you can refer back to them whenever you need. On our website, centerply.com, there's also a Q&A tab that answers even more questions that you may have. Starting from the left, here you can see we've created an Introduction to Targeted TV Packet. It's a 10-page booklet that provides an easy way for you to explain and understand a targeted TV solution. It's based on targeted audiences, location, programming, and cost. In that packet, we also include a checklist to quickly answer, when is targeted TV right? There are maps that make the concept easy to see and understand, and a use case that covers driving customers to a location. There's a page of benefits, and they point out how a brand's investments in advanced TV can demonstrate value and justify the performance of the media and that helps raise the comfort level of your future commitments. In the center, we've included an infograph funnel of what the whole TV marketplace looks like, starting from the broadest reach of TV broadcast on the top down to a single user and a device-centric digital option. It's a pretty familiar concept for marketers, and this shows how TV stacks up. Each break between the levels represents points where ads can be inserted. And at the bottom portion of the funnel, that includes some significant linear TV options that fall into the advanced TV category. As advertisers, you need to know the advantages and limits of each and how they can be combined for a whole view of the full video stack. Next is the virtuous cycle of data. That illustrates the retargeting ability of TV. Using digital audience segments reinforced by sales data, it can gauge the impact of media performance. By leading with data and having it reinforced each step of the way, it helps complete the ROI measurement and supports your ongoing decisions. And at the bottom right is an at-a-glance side-by-side comparison of household addressable to other groups of addressable TV and their advantages and drawbacks so you can decide what's right. With all this, you'll have a whole kit. You'll be ready to go in no time. You will be a targeted TV expert. Centriply also has an on-demand library. So there's an extensive list of use cases that you can tap into across a whole lineup of industry categories. These are just some of the educational materials that we provide to help change the mindset that may still linger that media is just a cheap commodity and show that solid planning can elevate commercials to really leverage being in the right content in the right location in front of the right audience. First off, we should level set on what attribution in TV means. 
Here, we define it as counting the number and location of households exposed to a commercial and then measuring a response. The whole industry of advanced TV is moving ahead quickly, and now more than ever, tracking the impact of your TV dollars is possible. Knowing your audience, tracking the geography of the media providers, and getting validation of which premium channels your ads will appear on, it can all come standard. Here's a short story about what we do in our family called High, Low, and New, and it's a great way during holiday gatherings um, to have multiple generations be able to relate sitting around a table or a room. Everyone gets the same three questions, usually asked by the youngest person in the group. They go around the table asking, what was your high point today? Followed by, what was a low point in your day? And finally, what was something new for you? So I'll start. My high point today is that measurement and attribution for linear targeted TV can be done to the zip code level, and in many cases to the household. My low point is that many advertisers and agencies don't know where to put this information into their marketing plans, and it means coordinating and tracking many media providers and blending it all together to make a cohesive campaign. And the new point is that a full stack video comparison with a targeted TV audience is now possible. Since we don't sell media, we can look at all the options and provide an unbiased plan to achieve the greatest impact of TV dollars. Now, when we were developing this webinar, my tech team wanted me to bring up our total video stack platform, which is really cool. So I thought about that for a bit. And then the data scientists wanted to talk about how we compare all the databases together and then count everything. Non-sequential elimination is what they call it, which it's a great way to prove the power of granular measurement. And I thought about that. And then the planners, well, they wanted everyone to know that we're the only independent company that tracks all the cable footprints so brands know where their impressions are being delivered. Since we don't sell media, we can look at all the options, spot broadcast, household addressable, network cable, to see which will provide the best media solution. So there is a difference between targeting. That's who is my customer and attribution. What happened when a consumer was exposed to my commercial? But what it really came down to is, what do you want to make happen, right? And more importantly, what action did a customer take after seeing your ads? Let's break it down. Here's what our agenda looks like today. You know what? I'm going to start at the end, and that'll tell us how to begin. What does success look like to your brands? I would say hmm, the most common business requests we get are really an increase in participation, whether it's more online orders or finding patients to join a drug study or ordering up more movies on demand. If you can count what happens, we can measure media against it. Then on to number two and three. It all starts with the data. Uh, it's about your community, the people you want to reach. Did, did you know you can incorporate the same audience data from LiveRamp or Experian or Axiom that you use for your digital campaign and apply it to your TV plan? Location targeting can be done from your mailing list, uh, or your loyalty program, or your social media responses. And break it up by county, state, or even custom region of the country. After that, we'll show you a bit about different types of advanced TV and how you can use each one depending on what you want to do with it. Next, number five, well, we'll look at the different kinds of ways to measure success and outcome. And once the attribution analysis is done, you can see what will provide the best reach, frequency level that will be effective, and the length of time it'll take to make an impact, which will start to move your customers right through that sales funnel. And when done right, the power of retargeting in number six, it'll increase your overall ROI. All right, so how does this attribution thing work anyway? What you see here is the whole process in a nutshell. 
We'll get to the details about each step in a few minutes. Starting in the middle, the most important part. A brand defines what they want their KPIs to be. It's the action they want to happen. We're all about performance marketing, and those key performance indicators are a big part of the attribution process. The brand decides what message will make things happen. They go on to make their creative, it's powerful, really resonates with consumers. And you know, hey, a little shout out to some of our digital planners here. We've seen some brands use video to test which commercials pull the best before they put it on TV. Man, we love that idea. Moving to the left, uh, we find that the audience locations and then we buy airtime to get the message into the right programming and the right day part. After that, we make sure it's the right weight to get the frequency level to get noticed and then use our historic pricing data to create an advantage on the cost to that target audience. Knowing exactly where and when those ads run, along with how many impressions they achieved, is directly matched to allow us to mark the window of the campaign, follow the actions taken by the audience. Now, the KPI can be different for different brands. It could be online purchases. It could be increasing inquiries to a call center, like the example I'm going to show you in the next slide. It could be over a weekend. It could take a month, a quarter, or an entire year. Now, we can measure the fluctuations of the purchases or signups, perhaps, then re-optimize the campaign driven by that response to create a successful loop and ROI. To give you a full picture of how this works in reality, the response timing changes from only a day for seasonal sales, like 4th of July, and get down to an hour for video on demand purchases. And then there can be lag times, two weeks, and a large, larger purchases, it could take three months. Now, there are four components of TV attribution. First, you have to define who you're looking for. Who and where are your customers? We're going to look at the attributes of the community and audience in the next case study. And what they were looking for was people who live within 10-mile radius of the hospital or office, has insurance, is considering medical treatment, and watches TV during office hours, and that's 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So once you have your definition, you need to find out where they are. Now, who does that? It can be done by a data company. It can be Experian, LiveRail, Axiom, MasterCard, down to the zip code. Or you may have your own. You may have previous customers. So then we go to number three, it's zip level audience data. Now it could be Nielsen, TiVo, Comscore, uh, a number of them can do that. And for number four, you need to define the performance or action that you want to happen. In this case, we wanted phone calls and website visits to increase. We wanted more people to take action to set up appointments. Now back to you guys. What does success look like for your brand? The next three so slides are a case study, which illustrates how these four main components work together. In this case, success came to a hospital group that wanted to increase calls to a call center and visits to their website. By knowing what zip codes the patients came from, we planned and activated a TV campaign in the most concentrated areas. As a result, the cost per call over a two-year period was reduced by 78%, and the revenue per visit doubled. You can see in the graph below, it tracks cost per call by month, and then it compares the effectiveness of each layer of the video stack over a two-year period. It was a blended solution where spot broadcast was used to increase reach to more households, and then we combined it with cable, which increased the frequency of the exposure to the commercials within the audience group. So who and where were their customers? Our unique ability is to map the hospital 
and the zip codes and the cable or TV stations, which allows for a real thorough analysis. Let's look at some data attributes of this community and the TV audience. The list below is a combination of data sources. Census and Nielsen provide population and universe numbers. Has insurance is an experience segment. Is considering medical treatment. Well, that's provided by web search results and pollen counts that are especially high during the allergy season. And the last one was particularly important to this client. Since they had staff to answer questions and set up appointments that were only available during office hours. Some other insights to this area came up when we created the maps. The locations in the map on the right with the orange color index particularly high. We looked into it and found there was a retirement community in that part of town. And then another area that was highly concentrated was north of the hospital. And while the audience composition was at the opposite end of the demographic spectrum, we found out there were several new developments uh, with young growing families and you know both those areas need medical services. Now, knowing this about these communities opened up many more programming choices that would reach both groups. You can have an optimized balance of TV impressions between broadcast and cable to reach each one. Next, we wanted to know, what are they watching? Who's delivering the commercials? Well, we have all that stored on our platform. Now, the seven cable systems within 10 mile radius, six of those had between 35 and 60 ad insertable networks. Now they had, uh, one of them was even newer, had newer equipment and they had 85 networks that they could insert on. So there was quite a bit of inventory to choose from. The impressions we tracked by day uh, with Nielsen overnight reports. And then we matched that to a call count by day. And those calls were traced back to individual zip codes. Now notice we're pretty privacy compliant here since we don't handle any personal information. It's really the epitome of performance media and this whole process had some real results. At the chart at the bottom, starting from the left, we plan the amount of exposure to high value audience zip codes. Then we looked at the audience segment that was exposed. We know there were 12,256 in zip code 30318. We know how many impressions went into that area and 13% increase in KPI performance just from that zip code alone. So this is what you see when you've completed your first round of analysis using zip level attribution. From this, you can make changes that can optimize your media plan and get a full picture of how your impressions affect your overall ad performance in a specific area. Now using the data we just reviewed, we start analyzing the opportunities to achieve the reach and frequency that we need. Is there anywhere we max out? Can we achieve a significant breakthrough and share a voice with the budget that we have? And with this level of targeted TV, we can combine location, the audience segment you're looking for, the day parts and network indices, along with the cost of media. And it makes it a lot easier for you to to decide what's right for your brand. So the benefit of targeted TV is that when it's done correctly, attribution leads to retargeting. The way we see it, TV can drive a digital campaign and digital campaigns can drive TV plans. It becomes a real successful loop that reinforces everything. So why is this important? because now you have the ability to reach consumers across screens and you've got many more opportunities to catch them along their path to purchase. First, we showed you an overview of the process, then a use case. Now we'll review the types of data and how it all relates to attribution. We consider it this way. Data goes into the process, then information comes out of the process, especially during the setup Historical data is needed for the first time. That's where live ramp and Experian come in, or you could tap into mobile or digital data. But once we've done a cycle or two, it can be augmented by the results to be more impactful. 
Now there are two types of data you can supply, purchase historical or what you've gathered yourself, action that took place from your business, from you, you're the source, uh, things like your sales receipts. Then we apply that data to locations to find high value audience segments. Next, we match it up with the appropriate content in an automated pool of inventory, millions and millions of options around the country and at what price we want to pay. At this point, we haven't told any vendors that we're interested yet. And since we've been doing this so long, we've tracked thousands of systems, millions of spots, and we've got historic data that lets us know where a campaign will be appropriate, where we can have a real advantage, or you know what's more important, where it's just not worth it. Our technology platform spits out the insertion order and off it goes on its merry way, followed up by our account team that handles the stewardship, traffic instructions, confirmations, how many are running, what happened. Then comes the attribution. What happened when a consumer was exposed? Did the website visits go up? Did more people attend an event? Were more tickets sold? If you're working with large-scale advertiser like we have, um, you can consider a brand health study from Millward Brown. Since we don't sell media, we can look at all the options and provide an unbiased plan to achieve the greatest impact of TV dollars. And you get to keep your agency fee. Hey, I think we have a question from the chat box. Yes, we sure do. Eric is asking, do you provide your own data or do you only house other people's data? A uh, very important distinction here. Let me confirm the question. What's the unique data that we bring to this process? Well, think of it this way. We tell you what media options in what areas can provide the impressions that you need. If you have data from other things you do, great. But even if you don't, if you don't have any more information beyond a single location, we can still give you an, an analysis about what TV options are available in what area. What do we bring to the party? Well, first thing is mapped out census counts down to the census block level, which is how many people around the country these days? Over 323 million as of 2016. We can overlay that with over 3,000 MVPD footprints and match those with 43,000 zip codes and the subscriber counts for the media providers. In some places, there are more than 85 different networks with commercial breaks being fed into those systems. And the historic cost of each of those breaks is used and tracked and compared to choose the best option. All the Nielsen demos are in, all the Experian categories in their catalog are on demand, and live Ramp is another source too. So all that combines to create plans that give the brands the best advantage when it comes to deciding where to put their TV impressions. Now when it comes to TV attribution, there's more than just connected TV and household addressable. Attribution and TV can come from several layers of TV delivery. It's way more than just connected TVs. You know, many brands don't realize that there are tons of opportunities to get in front of their audiences in the right TV programming in all different places around the country. Uh, and they don't have to be traditional TV markets. Starting from the left, these charts show you the number of subscribers to over-the-top services. And below that, there are linear TV options. We gather all that together. And hey, it's not a marketing webinar without a funnel. How about that? On the right, this shows the various ways an ad can be inserted into what we call the video stack. Our Tango Media Suite software takes these different layers and compares them to how they impact the locations of your audience. Some of you have experience with audience buying on digital platforms or try to use household addressable vendors. That's cool, we work with them too. Um, we find that the desire for one-to-one -one marketing is great. But some brands who need to have an impact on larger groups in short amounts of time, like a seasonal event, well, it can take too long to build up. And 
there are only a few household addressable providers. So if the audience isn't in the right location with a new cable box or having loaded the smart TV app, you're out of luck. You just need to know what is available in the locations that you're targeting. We know that the footprint of every cable zone is different and we have the zip codes within them. Hey, what's up? All right, it's this last brand challenge. It was an online food delivery service. Client objectives here were to increase brand awareness since they were a pretty new service in this city and no one knew who they were. Their commercials needed to be in very specific geofenced areas. We had to confirm that the right commercials had the correct offer codes. They wanted to establish a real competitive share of voice in a crowded market. They needed to make impact. Improving their brand health metrics was next. You know, things like intent, brand perception, stuff like that. The client wanted to use the same target zip codes that were being used for their tar targeted digital campaign. And we said, yeah, bring it on. Our services included a pre-campaign cost analysis where we used our automated inventory selection platform to create really an optimized plan based on cost overall budget the geographic on target efficiency of those dollars how efficient could we, could we make it audience targets by network and day part and break them all out and they had a pretty specific frequency goal which we really agreed with um, we thought to make an impact and and break through they needed to be set pretty high the result it was a high frequency geo-targeted tv campaign and it increased sales over a six month period by a whopping 63 percent oh kayla yep yeah. oh we have another question submitted by ryan he's asking was household addressable tv or satellite an option okay good great question someone's been doing their homework in these particular zip codes, uh, location determined what was available to be used. We looked at everything since we're not selling the inventory. So I'll take household addressable first. We always start with location. Uh, only two of the zips were located in a cable system that could do insertion in that fashion. And it was very expensive. Then we went on to find the price point of the product. Now, we historically recommend that if it's a product that sells over $30, they're good candidates. Uh, and there can be a pretty steep minimum in budget to get started, which we weren't meeting with this campaign. Satellite insertion is also limited in some markets. In this case, two areas were included in the satellite coverage. Another unique thing that targeted TV can do is test and control the areas of exposed TV directly to measure an action. Now we'll look at the brand study and how we broke it out. We've got three sections of the funnel. The upper, which is the standard brand metrics, uh, awareness, intent, favorability, things like that. Then the middle of the funnel, uh, we measured against website visits. And the lower part of the funnel is kind of as usual as the transactional. This is how we broke it out. And you can see awareness, familiarity, favorability, and consideration and intent. We had some real huge increases. So this is a type of reporting we do. And out of the 728 zip codes that we covered over the six month time period, these are just uh, five of the sample ones. And we compared them to some of the controls that we had to give you an idea of how detailed these reports can be. Mid funnel web visits uh, were tracked and it really just confirmed to the client that TV can drive to a digital property. They saw a huge increase in visitation. To wrap it all up, last thing on our agenda is to emphasize how our mission is to alleviate a marketer pain point of cross-screen integration of marketing channels. 
we want to help create cross-screen media plans that use the same data for TV as digital. And our process goes a long way towards that. We want benchmarks for TV, and we believe that performance marketing is a reality, and that's what we're built for. Targeted TV attribution allows you to expect more from your TV budgets. It's a unique value proposition. You can benchmark your custom universe for client KPIs. You can focus the TV weight where it will have the greatest audience impression value. It'll also focus that weight where it'll have the greatest impact on business outcomes. Keep an eye out for our webinar series. Uh, the next one is on driving ticket sales for event marketers. And we also will have one for medium-sized agencies and how partnering with us and using advanced TV uh, can make your services more unique and help you win more business. One thing I can recommend is reach out to us after the webinar is over and sign up for a free strategy session. It's free, there's no obligation. That way your specific situation with your business can really be addressed. We can give more detailed answers to your questions and you have specific situations that we can talk about. Whether you're web focused or brick and mortar, um, things like price points of your products, it can all be reviewed. And it could all affect the tactics that we suggest and then mostly how would this fit into the rest of your media plan. Thanks everyone. Really appreciate you sticking around for this. Welcome to the future of targeted TV.